My name is Bishop E.W. Jackson. I'm the national president for STAN, staying true to America's national destiny. And I'm also the president of Ministers Taking a Stand, uh, which is represented here today as the initiators of a petition and a letter to the National Portrait Gallery demanding that Margaret Sanger's bust be removed from the National Portrait Gallery. Now, in 1966, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission are commenting on and providing regulations for Title VII, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, said that there's a very important analysis that needs to take place to determine whether racism is happening or discrimination is happening. And what they said was, it is not whether there was intent to discriminate, but rather whether the effects are discriminatory, whether the results are discriminatory. Now that analysis has been accepted in education, in employment, in the criminal justice system, that if there are adverse negative impacts upon black or other minorities, that that requires investigation and correction. And we've been practicing that analysis since the 1960s for some 50 years. Now it's applied to almost every area of life in which black lives are affected, except one, except one, Planned Parenthood and abortion. Because we know that Planned Parenthood and abortion have had a far disproportionate impact on the black community, and yet for some reason, that fact has been completely ignored by liberals, and frankly, often by the mainstream media. This is a, a quote from a private letter uh, that Margaret Sanger wrote to Clarence Gamble in 1939. She proposed, quote, that we hire three or four colored ministers, preferably with social service backgrounds and with engaging personalities. The most successful educational approach to the Negro is through religious appeal. We do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. No wonder the KKK loved her. She began her career trying to reduce the populations of black and other minorities through eugenics, which meant forced or coerced sterilization. And the sterilizations that later happened in this country were largely inspired by Margaret Sanger's movement. One of her most favorite slogans was, more children from the fit, less from the unfit, that the chief aim, that is, she said, the chief aim of birth control. Another was, birth control to create a race of thoroughbreds. She referred to black people and others as inferior, people who should be banned from having children, and she also referred to them as human weeds and human waste. Now she said this, she said this, and I know it's unbelievable, she said, while I personally believe in the sterilization of the feeble-minded, the insane, and the syphilitic, I have not been able to discover that these measures are more than superficial deterrents when applied to the constantly growing stream of the unfit. They are excellent means of meeting a certain phase of the situation, but I believe in regard to these, as in regard to other eugenic means, that they do not go to the bottom of the matter. I shudder to think, what was the bottom of the matter? She went on to say this, the main objects of the Population Congress would be to apply a stern and rigid policy of sterilization and segregation to that greater population whose progeny is tainted or whose inheritance is such that objectionable traits may be transmitted to offspring. So even though for PR purposes, she went from talking about eugenics to talking about birth control, her commitment to stopping the growth of the populations of those that she considered to be unfit or defective or unworthy continued. She said this, we are paying for and even submitting to the dictates of an ever increasing, unceasingly spawning class of human beings who never should have been born at all. Planned Parenthood is nothing more than a euphemism for planned death 
for the people that Margaret Sanger thought should not exist. And to think that her bus sits alongside of MLK and Rosa Parks, if Margaret Sanger had her way, MLK and Rosa Parks would never have been born. In her book, The Pivot of Civilization, she said this, our civilization has bred, is breeding, and is perpetuating constantly increasing numbers of defectives, delinquents, and dependents. Martin Luther, that is, uh, uh, Margaret Sanger appropriately spoke to the Ku Klux Klan because they appreciated the things that she was saying. And it's an outrage that the National Museum would honor such a person and add insult to injury by putting her in the struggle for justice exhibit. In their letter, because we wrote them a letter asking, demanding that it be removed, this is what they responded in their letter. The National Portrait Gallery said Sanger is included because she strived to bring medical advice and affordable birth control to disadvantaged women. What I just read to you, does that sound like somebody who's interested in helping disadvantaged women? She was not interested in helping them. She was interested in getting rid of them. She thought they weren't worthy of life. She said this in her book, Pivot of Civilization. Everywhere we see poverty and large families going hand in hand, the least fit to carry on the race are increasing most rapidly. People who cannot support their own offspring are encouraged by the church and the state to produce large families. Many of the children thus begotten are diseased or feeble-minded. Many become criminals. The burden of supporting these unwanted types has to be borne by the healthy elements of the nation. Funds that should be used to raise the standard of our civilization are diverted to maintenance of those who should never have been born. Now the National Portrait Gallery refuses to acknowledge any of this. They act as if all she was interested in is helping poor people and there's nothing in the record that suggests that. What it suggests is that she was interested in ridding our country of people that she deemed to be unworthy of life. Now this evil has no place in the National Museum exhibit, let alone one for the struggle for justice. Her intentions were not only to deprive more poor and minority people of justice, but of life itself. And if we want to bring down the Confederate flag, and I'm no supporter of the Confederate flag, and we want to bring down Confederate monuments, and I'm no supporter of the Confederacy, those are things that happened 150 years ago, and they have no impact on the lives of people for the most part. Margaret Sanger is responsible for the deaths of 285,000 babies, black babies, every single year. We're going to take those down. We ought to take her out. So I challenge the mainstream media. Please look at Margaret Sanger with intellectual honesty. I'm not asking you to condemn her. I'm not asking you to justify her. But please find out what the facts are and put those out to the American people yes. so that they will know who she really is and what she really stood for and what she really believed. Now, I challenge the press to take seriously this issue of racial disparity yes. because we apply it in every other circumstance. When we, when we see more than the, uh, what we consider to be an appropriate or, dis or proportional number of black people in prison, what do we say? Something's wrong. Yes. We don't say, well, maybe they committed more crimes. That's a racist thing to say, Come on. right? No, we say, no, something's wrong with the system that you have so many black people caught up in it. Well, if you were killing 37% of the babies that are impregnated in the black community, 37% of them are being killed by abortion, and we're only 11% of the population, why doesn't the press ask why? Why is that? Young black women are getting a lot of help to make the choices that they're making. They're not making them on their own. Desperate impact requires investigation and correction. Because we're not talking about education. We're not talking about the criminal justice system. We're not talking about housing. We're talking about life and death whether somebody gets to live or die. And you can, you can draw a direct line from Margaret Sanger's attitude about poor and other minorities to the fact that most of Planned Parenthood's abortion facilities are in or near black neighborhoods. 36% or 37% of aborted babies are black. 21% are Hispanic. The very people that she said we needed to get rid of. And in some places such as New York, 50%. 
50% of the babies aborted are black. So Margaret Sanger would be truly gratified because she would say she's accomplished her end. In fact, some studies say that the black population is not being replenished and is therefore in the long term in decline and largely the result of abortion. She would, she would dance in the museum because that's exactly what she wanted to see happen. So does the National Portrait Gallery stand by its statement that Margaret Sanger helped disadvantage women? Because if they do, they are standing by a lie. And the only reason we believe why Planned Parenthood has not been defunded is that the lie has been accepted by too many people. And when people begin to know the truth, the truth will make them free. And they'll begin to say, you know what? We don't need to be spending any tax dollars on somebody who was a racist, a eugenicist, who basically thought the same way Hitler did. Why in the world are we honoring her? So yes, we should not only take her bus out of the museum, we should defund Planned Parenthood, not spend a dime of tax dollars on Planned Parenthood. The woman was a racist. She was a genocidal figure in America and in human history. And to honor her is to be complicit in her evil and her racism. That's right. If you are honoring Margaret Sanger, you are joining together with her in her racist ideology. So she may have never used the term that is Margaret Sanger, but she was clearly a white supremacist. That term is used today as a political weapon, often without any facts to back it up. We've got facts to back up that Margaret Sanger was a white supremacist. So we're calling upon Congress to take action now. Congress has oversight of federal facilities. Congress needs to investigate why in the world we are spending tax dollars on honoring someone of this kind of infamy and this kind of evil. And Congress needs to take steps now to defund Planned Parenthood. I want to thank Senator Ted Cruz and Congressman Louis Gohmert for calling upon their colleagues in Congress to support the effort to have this bus removed. God bless them. So I say to you in closing, the Bible says this in Proverbs 17, 5, he who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the just, both of them are like an abomination to the Lord. So we say, Bill, we've got 14,000 people so far who have signed a petition. This happened in a matter of about a week saying Margaret Sanger's bus should not be in the National Portrait Gallery. So we're standing with them, with all these people here, and with every American who cares about the lives of children to say, end this abomination now. National Portrait Gallery, you must remove the bust. You must remove the bust of Margaret Sanger, and we will not quit until you do. You must remove the bust.